It's a sad thing. It's a very, very sad thing because we got Bedlam for the last time as a Big 12 conference game. Oklahoma going to Stillwater, Oklahoma should be an electric atmosphere in every sense of the phrase. They're favored by six and a half, 3.30 Eastern, ABC. You wish it was a night game just for the pure pageantry of it all. And we've all seen Stillwater, Oklahoma, and the way that stadium is set up to where they're slapping the side of the stadium with the paddles. They're pretty much on top of the opposing sideline. A lot of people go in there. Not many teams come out undefeated. Now, Oklahoma, they're not undefeated going in there. They already have a loss based on what happened last week against Kansas. So for Oklahoma, my question for them is, can they sort of restabilize this operation? Where are they at psychologically? Still have a lot to play for. Still have your Big 12 title hopes very much so intact, but you got to handle business. Now, you lost your mulligan last week against Kansas. Stormed the field in Lawrence. It was, it was not a good sight. How do they handle it? How do they respond? Because again, this is still a team that's only in year two under Brent Venables. It's going to take a lot of good leadership within that locker room to have that bounce back. Now, for Oklahoma State, we talked about the, the Big 12 title hopes for Oklahoma. Oklahoma State's thinking Big 12 title as well. I mean, don't look now, but the Pokes are very much so in the race for this thing. And Ollie Gordon, their running back, is very much so in the Heisman conversation when it comes to Week 10 of the college football season. So the other part of this that we can't ignore, you don't think Oklahoma State would love to send Oklahoma out of the conference with an L? I promise you, everyone in Stillwater, Oklahoma, would be a fan of that. Mike Gundy, you know he would relish that. I promise you he would be phenomenal for a great soundbite postgame if they do beat Oklahoma. So, I hope we get the soundbite. But even with that being said, I'm excited to see what Oklahoma does because I think Oklahoma, Brent Venables, will have a great soundbite afterwards as well. So, I'm, I'm eager to see that one too. So, with that being said, what does this game come down to? For me, the obvious is Ollie Gordon against that Oklahoma trenches. Because Oklahoma, last week, they allowed 200 yards rushing against Kansas. Y'all, that's not good. That's not going to cut against Ollie Gordon because he's been putting up road-to-glory numbers, like Tecmo Bowl numbers. He had 282 yards and 271 yards rushing the last two games. That is freakish. If Oklahoma State is able to run the football, even a version of that, or be somewhere near what Kansas did, that's going to be able to control the tempo of this game. And think about this too, with how quickly Jeff Levy wants to operate offensively for Oklahoma, how much they want to just push the pedal forward. If you push the pedal forward and have some trouble early on in this game, you could very much so be in a situation where you run three plays and you've only taken 30 seconds off the clock a run and two incompletions, you're three and out, you're off the field, and the ball goes back to Oklahoma State. And with Ollie Gordon, the way he's running the football, they're not a run-first team necessarily by nature of what they've done over the course of the year, but you'd have to imagine with the crowd at their back, with how quickly Oklahoma wants to go, with what Oklahoma can do offensively, if Oklahoma State can control the tempo of this game and have Ollie Gordon be the impact player of this game, that would change the entire complexion of what Oklahoma is able to do and what they have to do offensively. Now, if you're able to kind of neutralize Ollie Gordon, let's change that word from neutralize to manage. Because I think neutralizing a dude who's been over three, almost over 300 yards uh, the last two weeks is a little bit ambitious. If you can just manage him, if you can force Oklahoma State to be in a situation where Alan Bowman has to consistently throw the football to beat you, then I think you give yourself a chance. Because we've seen Oklahoma now. They want to be aggressive. They want to dial it up and get after the passer. If they can make it a game like that, it'll start with stopping Ollie Gordon on early downs. Very big if, very tall order. But that, I think, is what it's going to take when it comes to Oklahoma winning this football game. So, other question we got to ask here. What's the rhythm like for Oklahoma's offense here with Dylan Gabriel? Because I wonder if Kansas didn't maybe provide a solid blueprint for Oklahoma State in this game. Now, Oklahoma State hasn't been phenomenal defensively to this point in the year. But Kansas did a great job last week of being really physical with these Oklahoma pass catchers. And I understand the elements probably played a factor in it as well with Dylan Gabriel being able to consistently distribute the football accurately. We all understand that. But at the same time, Oklahoma's offense is built on rhythm. They want to run the football. They want to get lateral on you. And they want to be able to work that quick game. And once they get that quick game working, once they get your defense off balance, then they take shots. Then they push the ball downfield. Oklahoma last week against Kansas really struggled to find that rhythm because on the perimeter, Kansas's defensive backs were really physical. Now, Kansas's DBs, I think, are probably better than what Oklahoma State has in the secondary. But if you're going to be physical and kind of throw them off their rhythm within the play, if I'm Dylan Gabriel and I drop back and I think I have a hitch route coming at, let's say, five to six yards, but he gets jammed, 
and, and I hit my step where I'm about to throw the football, and he's only at three, still trying to get out of his break and fight through contact, well, then I got to get off that read, and I have to go somewhere else, meaning plan A is not there. Textbook, the rhythm of that play is destroyed. So how does Oklahoma State handle that? Because we talk about this a lot whenever you want to play physical on the outside. It's classic risk it in exchange for a biscuit situation. Because if you swing and miss, there's a whole lot of real estate behind you. And then you end up on a Coach 30 video, like we've talked about on this show before. You don't want to have that happen if you're Oklahoma State. I think you really miss Andrew Anthony here if you're Oklahoma. So who is it that steps up? Nick Anderson, obviously, is a guy that's been balling for Oklahoma. Drake Stoops, I think, has to have a big game in the slot for them. Creating that rhythm is going to be crucial. Because if you can't create that rhythm, then you're staring right in the face of what we talked about a second ago with Oklahoma State controlling the tempo, being able to run the football. And Oklahoma fans, too, throughout the course of this past week, based on what happened against Kansas, they'd like to see Dylan Gabriel push the ball downfield a little bit more. And they're probably looking at Jeff Levy saying, hey, let's be a little more aggressive here. So I'm not going to question play calling. I'm just telling you, if Oklahoma pushed the ball downfield a little bit more, that would make the good people in Norman, Oklahoma happy. I also think it kind of puts Oklahoma State on their heels. So something to watch for there. If they do create rhythm and are able to push the ball downfield, that could kind of be the, the spark that sets this whole thing off. Now, my ultimate question when it comes down to this whole thing, where is Oklahoma at psychologically? And psychologically is maybe even a bit of a stretch, but where's Oklahoma at when it comes to the gas in the tank? Because I think after the Texas game, we've, we saw after that bye week, the way they played UCF, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of you know strain, it seemed like they felt. You wonder if maybe the weight of perfection was weighing on them just a little bit too much in their second year under Brent Venables. And now without that weight, now having gotten your first loss, one side could argue, well, J.D., that weight of perfection is dialed up a notch. They're in fight or flight mode. They can't lose another ball game and expect to make the college football playoff. And they got Big 12 title hopes they want to achieve. Like, maybe that pressure is dialed up. Maybe so. But also, I wonder if maybe there's a sense of urgency that's created from having that kind of loss. Because to be real, like, Oklahoma, I mean, Kansas played phenomenal. I don't want to take anything away from Kansas. But Oklahoma has a better roster than what Kansas had. Now, Kansas played better on that day. They won the football game. You can't take anything away from Lance Leipold and company. But Oklahoma is a better operation, top to bottom, talent-wise, than Kansas. So what does that go back to? It goes back to internal temperature. And I know they're dinged up across the board defensively. And you hope that you know everyone that's questionable is able to go if you're a Sooner fan. But like, I wonder if maybe there isn't a little bit of a, okay, look around. We're in the foxhole, boys. We're in the foxhole. The good news for Oklahoma, they're used to being in the foxhole. They were in the foxhole this entire offseason with everyone talking about Brent Venables. Is he the right guy? They're six and seven. They lost five games by one score. Who's Oklahoma? Like, I still think this is a really talented football team, like I've already communicated to you a couple times, and I think they're going to get up off the mat in this game. I think the leadership in that locker room is too strong. I think they are too battle-tested, and... I think they're going to do a lot to correct some of the mistakes we've seen previously, defensively at least. Keep an eye on the misdirection for Oklahoma State because that really is something that Oklahoma struggled with throughout the course of the season from the UCF game to the Kansas game, all that pre-snap movement. Keep an eye on that. But even so, I think Oklahoma offensively is able to get rhythm in the pass game. I think Drake Stoops has a big day being that guy that creates rhythm in the short game and then Nick Anderson does what he does going vertical. I think Oklahoma ends up winning this football game. Final score, 34-27. So with that being said, Brent Venables and Oklahoma keeping their college football playoff hopes alive, keeping their Big 12 title hopes alive, and just survive another week to see and fight and keep on rolling for what they have aspired to to this point in the year. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.